The next muscles we'll be covering are your rhomboids. You get the rhomboid minor and rhomboid major. We'll be covering them together because it makes it easier to study at my meds. Um, before we do the attachments of the rhomboids, just, let's just do a quick review on the anatomy of the skeleton. So when we look at the spine, in the center of the vertebrae you get the spinous processes and then just lateral to that you get your transverse processes. Uh, when we look at the scapula, let's just have a look at the scapula, you get the medial border of the scapula, the lateral border of the scapula, this will be the spine of your scap, supraspinous fossa and infraspinous fossa. So when we look at the attachments of the rhomboids, let's do rhomboid minor first. Rhomboid minor <coughs> attaches to the spinous processes of C7 and T1. Rhomboid major attaches to the spinous processes of T2 all the way to T5. Okay, that's the um, origin. Then it runs all the way down to the medial border of the scapula. The rhomboid minor running from C7 and T1 to, uh, spinous process, it runs infralaterally and it attaches to the medial border of the scapula just medial to that spine where the spine ends. That's where the rhomboid minor attaches. Um, rhomboid major running from T2 to T5 spinous process uh, attaches to the medial border of the scapula below the spine of the scap. The function of this muscle um, is also elevation of the shoulder and it's also retraction. So as we mentioned earlier, retraction is like that when the scapula or the blade, shoulder blades come closer together and protraction will be that when the scapula go further apart.